Thank you for listening to the Roast West Coast Coffee Podcast. I upload this podcast on the Anchor podcast platform. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it is the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor distributes the podcast for me so you can hear it on Spotify or Apple or wherever you are listening. And you can make money from the podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything that you need to make a podcast in one place. You can download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Good morning and welcome back to the Roast West Coast Coffee Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Wolt, and today I'm sharing a conversation with Ruben Enriquez. He is the founder and head roaster of the family-run Orahan Coffee Roasters in Vista, California. According to Ruben, it can also be called Origin Coffee Roasters, and Orahan is Spanish for origin. Ruben has done quite a bit in his career, and he started his coffee company after working as a mechanical engineer. He also spent time exploring the culinary arts and even went to business school. He kept coming back to coffee as a way to connect with his roots, his birthplace in Mexico, the feelings that coffee evoked, and the community it created. From the beginning, it was his goal to source, roast, and serve top-tier organic specialty coffees from producers who demonstrated a commitment to the best sustainability practices. He reiterated to me several times how important it was that it was organic and specialty, not just one or the other. According to Ruben, quote, This is our foundation. We work directly with some of our farmers at Origin, and also with our green coffee importers who believe in our philosophy and support us in finding great organics. In just a moment, you'll hear us talking about his journey to coffee and the growth of his business, one customer at a time, starting with online sales, moving into farmer's markets, and eventually into retail. We also talk a little bit about what it's like to work closely with family. While you're listening today, take a moment to follow at Origin Coffee Roasters on Instagram. Origin is spelled O-R-I-G-E-N, and do me a favor by clicking the follow button on At Roast West Coast while you're there. You'll also find links to this podcast's coffee newsletter on RoastWestCoast.com. Right now, I'm drinking a can of cold brew that I picked up on a recent road trip across the country, and I think you should grab one too, because it's time for the show. So, Ruben, uh, welcome to the Roast West Coast Coffee Podcast. I appreciate you being here. Uh, could you just uh, say for me uh, what the name of your company is and what you do there? Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me, Ryan. Uh, my name is Ruben Enriquez, and I am the uh, owner and uh, a co-founder and owner and a head roaster of Origen Coffee Roasters. And or- uh, uh, how did you pronounce that, Orahan? Origin, or you, uh, most people right here in the United States say origin, uh, like origin, origin, but origin, yeah, yeah. So you have Orahan Coffee Roasters, but I want to learn a little bit more about you. What was your kind of your first experiences with coffee that made you interested in coffee as a drink or as something that you thought would become, you know, a big part of your life? <laughs> you know, uh, you know that. Uh, I don't know. You 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 know that story about of a fish that. Uh, it's always on on the water, you know, and, 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 you know, swimming on the water, and he's happy, you know. He doesn't know anything different until someone takes that fish out of the water. That was me, though. Basically, uh, I was born in a, a place where coffee, especially, uh, you know, really good coffee is grown there, but also uh, it is uh, a very high quality uh, coffee, though. So I was I was actually immersed in that culture at that time. I didn't realize that until I moved out of my town when I noticed it, noticed that uh, I was missing something. Uh, and I was like, uh, what is, you know, what is that? You know, where, uh, you know, I started going to uh, coffee shops, even people, family, friends and everything. And all I could find was uh, instituted canned coffees, you know, instant coffees. And I was like, wait, 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 something is wrong, you know, like, 
Uh, or maybe there is, I need to go back to my town and try to figure it out, what's going on, you know? Uh, that, that was my first experience, though. And not, it's not a, like a, something that I, um, an experience that I have. It's just that I remember something. I've, once I move out of my town and I say, oh, that was, there is something that in that town, in my, uh, in my origi- uh, original place, that's hence the name origin, that actually uh, was calling me, calling on me, basically. Yeah, that was, that was. And you were, and I'm sorry, the name of the, the, the place that you're from in uh, Mexico is where? Well, it's a central, it's in central Mexico, it's Michoacán, Mexico. It, it's actually the beer place of, or one of the beer places in, in, in um, you know, the coffee in Mexico. And, uh, you know, that, that town is, is very rich in terms of uh, climate for coffee. You know, you, you have uh, altitude, you have the weather, you have lots of water. You know, lots of good people also. Actually, right now is, is one of the epicenters of agricultural in Mexico, you know. So uh, to this day, they still harvest and, and grow and, and harvest coffee. Very good coffee there, too. Yeah. So what was the reason that you left in the first place? Well, uh, as everyone, you know, uh, you're something in your guts. So something tells you to go, right? You know, that, you know, uh, discover, you know, pretty much... Um, Enjoy the world. Basically, to me, the world is, I'm a citizen of the world, basically. You know? So I started moving to different places. I started moving a, a, right there in Mexico to the capital, Morelia, at that time, because I was actually a, at a school at that time. And then I moved to Celaya, Mexico. Then I moved to Baja, California. Then I went to the United States. So, so it was a different places. Actually, from the United States, I actually moved from L.A. to San Diego at one point. You know? So, yeah, that's, uh, that was the reason, basically. Something internal. You end up in San Diego. When do you decide that you're going to start working in coffee? You know, uh, I was working on a, I'm still working, I can say, uh, in the engineering field. And I, I don't know if I can put it this way. Uh, you know, whatever profession you have, you know, a medical, whatever you do, uh, engineering, whatever, you have a purpose. Uh, and you just have a, a, a one way to do things, right? So I, I have the engineering because I have, and I, I had uh, my creativity. I, I, need, I wanted to, to put it in, in different places, right? So I was designing a lot of things, you know, working for, for different companies and, and working on mechanical design, engineering, uh, electrical, you know, uh, manufacturing, quality control, uh, production, management, uh, different things. So at one point I, I was like, you know what? I, I really want to do my own thing, you know? Uh, 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 and it was not necessarily uh, engineering. Now, the reason is uh, you can do engineering. As I say, you know, uh, engineering is not a, a broad thing, you know, something that you can say, oh, I want to do this for the rest of my life, and that's it. You, you have a the vision as an engineer to start whatever you want, and, uh, but you see it with a, in, within a different scope. You know, I, have, I see it with a different lenses, basically. Even in my, my roastery, you know, all the tools I have, all the... Uh, the uh, it is within the scientific method, you know, you, 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 you have to observe, you know, repeat and measure things in order to accomplish something. That, so engineering is not left. It's just, I just changed the profession though. Yeah. And I was, uh, years after 20 years actually of doing engineering specifically uh, as a career. So when, when did you decide that, okay, I'm going to turn my focus back to coffee, this thing from my youth? Uh, from this place that I grew up, and I'm going to start. I'm going to. I'm not only going to work in coffee, but I'm going to start my own coffee company. Well, uh, there was a moment of introspection, and that moment is not just one day. You know, it's just actually a period of time where I was. Uh, I was actually looking for, you know, ideas, brainstorming, uh, you know, trying to feel different things. You know, uh, so I at one point I, I I noticed that I was inclined to to the culinary arts. So I went to the Pasadena School of Culinary Arts, and you know, I actually was immersed in that uh, culture for, for a while. I was interested in wine, beer, you know, trying to see different paths. Uh, and uh, slowly, you know, uh, uh, whenever I wanted to, to I ended up do, always doing coffee, you know, like, <laughs> even I was, you know, I was, uh, do, as I was doing pastry, you know, I was doing anything, and I ended up, you know, very focused on trying to replicate and do something with my coffee. And I say, you know what, uh, uh, you know, that's what I want to do, basically. 
you after you went to school, you um, you and you, I had emailed a little bit, and you started roasting at home. Yeah. And then you you purchased a small roaster and a production area uh, here in Vista, California. Right. Uh, what made you decide to to pick the origin the origin or the origin name? Origin origin is fine. The way you say it, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I want to do, I want to be respectful of the name, but my pronunciation is <laughs> not great, so I want to make sure no, that I'm getting perfect. it right. <laughs> and I'll, I want to share something with you later after I name the, the, the coffee business, okay? But uh, but yeah, go ahead. Uh-huh. Well, my question is, what uh, where did that name come for you, for you, and what does it mean uh, for the coffee company? Oh, okay. Well, uh, you know, for me, it was something. You know, uh, as I'm outsider from the, right here, you know, it was very intuitive. You know, uh, you know, origin basically literally means origin, origin or origin is basically where you are coming from. Basically, your roots. Uh, basically, means that go back to the land. Uh, it's origin, basically. It, it's just that you change the the I with the E, in Spanish is origin. It's the same thing, origin. Uh, the name came after. You know, I, I have a couple of, of you know. I was restorming a little bit, and, and then I said, you know, uh, it actually makes totally sense to me, and I felt so comfortable. And, you know, you know, marketing in, in the school, because I actually went to business school also at one point, they, they were telling you, oh, make something clever, you know, a, a, a name that is. So I was trying to play with it, and I said, you know what, no, it doesn't make sense to me. You know, I, I, I was like always like, you know, I want to put it the way I, I feel it, you know. It wasn't uh, necessarily something that... Uh, that I wanted to turn right away. I wanted to really explore and, and, and see the business from a different perspective, you know, uh, out of the traditional business school, basically. And that's how I ended up with Origen. Once you launched as a company, you started, I think, as an online store. Yes. And now you have you have a cafe spot in a business park in Carlsbad that I've been to, that I stopped by. Uh-huh. But this last year with a lot of businesses doing work from home, uh, how did you adapt to that? And have things changed now that people are going back to work in the office? Uh, for us, it's, uh, it's been uh, like anyone else, you know, uh, we are being impacted uh, drastically. For Origen, actually, uh, the impact is very positive, though. And I'm very, uh, very humble to say that, you know, when, I, when we started this, uh, this concept, uh, when I started this concept, I wanted to do it uh, in a way with with no pressure, you know. I, I I was very, you know, with my career, with the previous former career, you know, as a busy man, you know, uh, you know, I, I didn't have any pressure of, uh, uh, you know, of oh, I have to do it in X amount of time or, or whatever. Uh, so I did it slowly, uh, and we I tried to to make foundation a good foundation for it. So uh, lots of education, you know, and I wanted to put everything, uh, you know, the seeds. And plant the seeds actually on the on, on the soil very well. Uh, uh, so I think this uh, pan, uh, this health situation helped me to actually verify that I actually did very well because uh, at that time one of the first thing was okay how can I put this, this coffee in, in 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 customers' hands? So I started an online uh, online business, uh, you know, and and I uh, you know obviously if, if no one knows you, you know, I decided to to go to a farm market and I wanted to, you know, see that experience firsthand, you know, and, you know, I wasn't in a hurry. I said, you know, to myself, one customer a, a, a week is perfect for me, you know, one, you know, if you do the math, that's with four customers a month, you know, so I start adding and adding and adding. Turns out that I start making more and more and more. And it, and, and um, I think uh, the, the quality of our products, and I, I'm, I'm very humble and I, a lot of our customers actually feel the same way. Those are the things that actually keep us afloat, basically. Uh, and um, I know I, I sometimes it's, I feel bad for a lot of co- uh, coffee shops. I like a lot of customers that, uh, that you know they are struggling and everything. But um, for us, was the opposite. Uh, in 2018, I did implement a, a, a very new quality control system in our, in our, in our roastery. Actually, from, from the very early stages of 2018, and I start seeing uh, right away within two or three, four, four months, I saw uh, ourselves doubling actually we were like 150 percent up and 200 percent then the pandemic came and actually it was like a, a ripple effect you know and that was a i understand a lot of coffee shops closed the doors and a lot of people were in the farming market we were on the outside most of the time so for for me you know i started seeing like uh you know i, I couldn't catch up with my orders uh, you know green coffee so i have to you know order more or going to origin uh, to origin basically and i started you know getting getting more uh, coffee and more, more green coffee, more green coffee, and 
Uh, and uh, and today it's been a, a blast. You know, it's it's a lot of work. Uh, you know, and we are just working another in another area right now. And um, we have a, in parallel another another place we're working right now in another another foreign market. So very busy. Thanks, God. You you definitely are diversified with the farmers markets and online and the business park. Uh, the one day that I stopped by it was kind of the middle of the afternoon, and there were still people kind of coming into this business park. Uh, where you have a really cool container set up, right? How how do you manage balancing that act between trying to create the foundation and these online sales and and making sure you can adjust, but also creating engagement with the customers that are coming up during during COVID during the pandemic? You know, they're they're taking yeah. time out of their day and they want to spend it with you, right? You know, sometimes I you know you think about uh, sometimes you, you things come by itself. I was thinking a, a little bit, uh, you know, to my father, my mom, the way they used to do business at one point. Uh, and I actually, I remember I was uh, seven, eight, ten years, and, and I was actually managing their businesses. You know, I was actually very uh, customer uh, focus oriented. So I am a, a believer that, you, you know, you have to, you have to interact with your customers. You have to feel, you have to, See, you have to see in, in a in, in a third dimension, not just a, 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 when you're online. There is it feels cold to me, even though you know I, sometimes you know the person or something. But you know, when when you are face to face in a foreign market, or or, or when I go to my uh, you know cafes that we supply right here in San Diego, we go and uh, uh, and I we deliver the coffee, and people is waiting for us. Sometimes people is like waving, like hey, you know the coffee arrived, you know. <laughs> You know, because sometimes we were late, or, the, or or our customer or the cafe was actually running low, and we arrived with the coffee, and we feel that uh, that energy, that's or 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 steam, basically, that's what keeps us moving. Part of your team, I believe, is is your wife and your family that works with you. Yes. What is that experience like? I've had the opportunity to work with my wife. You're spending a lot of time together. You're creating a business together. What is that experience like for you? You know, uh, Origen Coffee business is mainly is mainly a, a family-owned business. Uh, you know, we have, uh, we, yes, we, we, that's the core, right? Uh, you know, we have to manage our roastery or cafe uh, or farm markets and online sales and, and all the families involved in one way or another. My, my wife, though, she's very, uh, very good and different. Uh, you know, she's actually a barista, a coffee lover, too. You know, she's right now in one of the farm markets, you know, and very busy. Uh, sometimes my my daughter is delivering coffee. My wife, myself, my wife is also an accountant. So everything kind of uh, we put everything together. You know, I am uh, you know putting you know I'm doing the maintenance on the machine. You know, I'm uh, upgrading software. I am doing all different things. Even even my my youngest daughter, you know, she is very good on on face to face with the customers and explaining the origin of the coffees and uh, and and I see that uh, she's very good also in. in Touching base with them and uh, with their needs, basically. Uh, so I think it's a very good experience for me. Uh, it wasn't always very good, you know. We, we crash uh, a lot of times, you know. Sometimes, uh, uh, you know, with my daughter or my my wife, you know, they say you are so bossy, you know. Sometimes you tell, <laughs> well, it's it's hard to to make a line, you know, and to break a line. And, and I, I, sometimes when I am a, in a different scenario, I tell you know what, a business is a business, and if, if we are there, if I don't tell you, honey. If I, don't, if I don't tell you my uh, to my daughter, my daughter, and I tell you your name, don't feel bad. You know, it's, it's just that you know we're in, in front of our customers, and I don't wanna, uh, you know, I wanna keep that relationship uh, separate. But sometimes it's hard to break it. You know, oh, so hard. Very hard. I worked for a family restaurant, so I worked for yeah. my dad and and my mom. We all worked there together, and uh, I was looking back. I think about how how busy we were all the time because we were doing all this, you know, those things that you were doing. And right. sometimes I wonder, my parents probably didn't get to see each other very much because one of them would work during the day and one would work at night. Yeah. They would alternate. And, and that, that's a, that's something that as an entrepreneur, you uh, is different than going to the office nine to five every day. So here's the thing, uh, you know, my wife, she's a coffee lover. She's a barista. She's the CEO of the company. She is actually the cook of our kitchen because we also have a kitchen, you know, for for our deli and everything. Uh, I'm also I'm, I'm I'm his helper. Uh, when I am roasting, she's helping me and the roasting. Um, I'm the head roaster. Uh, uh, you know, I'm the president. You know, uh, 
my daughter, she's a barista. Then, uh, then she's a customer sell, you know. So we, we, we work in, we put different hats together. But the, the, bo the bottom line is that, uh, you know, it's a family business. And, and yes, we have uh, sometimes conflicts, you know, but we overcome. And, and, and that's, I think that's our strength, basically. Um, you you mentioned um, that when you when the pandemic started, you had to like kind of you had to up you had to pick up how much coffee you were roasting and and how much was selling. You could see your sales going up. I recently drank a Bolivia coffee of yours that I really really enjoyed. What do you look for when you're looking for a green coffee? I'm assuming you get a lot of coffee from Mexico, but obviously you expand out into all different regions. So, well, thank you for touching base. Basically, our uh... I am not, a, we are not fixed to a place. So the way I started this is like, uh, you know, when you go to, when I start going to seminars, trade shows, you, you start knowing a lot of people on the industry. You know, I, I actually do di a direct trade with a, a few farmers. You can do anything, you know, everything. You know, I have a very good uh, importer, but I'll, most of the times I, I go to the my, my suppliers directly and I say, you know what, I really want to, you know, ten bucks of of the next crop, but you 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 anticipate that you know you know like a year ago, I want to make sure I have this uh, lot, and I want to buy it. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, subject to approval. Is there any way you can put it to to with with my um, importer, or sometimes I I can work with your importer, whoever whatever works. You you find a way. Uh, so I am constantly sourcing coffee from all over the world, basically. Yeah, Bolivia is actually one of the new ones. Actually, the first time I had Bolivia uh, into the to the, you know, I was missing. You know, a lot of the times I was working with Peru, so I was exploring Peru for two or three years, and you know, getting very good results. Uh, uh, I was actually honored to have one of the very very one of the Cup of Excellence at one point from Peru, Guatemala. So I'm I'm actually working right now with farms in Guatemala, and they are coming in a few weeks. Colombia, uh, Ethiopia, you know. All over the world, so it's it's just a, a network connecting, and I think this is what coffee is about. You know, it's a it's open your 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 senses, open your your view, and try to find something and and re and pretty much uh, share that with your customers, basically. And yeah, that's what it is. But yeah, the, the Bolivia was the, one of the first ones I I have from Bolivia, though. Speaking of sharing things with your customers, you've done all these different things in the past. What is it that you guys are looking forward to doing in the future? What's what's coming up next for for the coffee company? Yeah, well, there is a need for expansion. Uh, our roastery needs a uh, an upgrade in uh, in terms of uh, space. You know, we have to I have to we actually have some plans right now. We are working. I'm I'm trying to. That's uh, in the near future. That's the main thing right now because uh, uh, you, you're gonna be surprised. But uh, this is the first time we are actually doing uh, retail uh, other than Fernand partner markets we, just this year. You know, so most of our business is online, uh, wholesale. You know, coffee shops around San Diego and uh, a lot of coffee clubs subscriptions. That's mainly our our, our business. So I started doing um, uh, retail. Uh, so the other expansion it will be retail. That's another thing that we are looking for down the road. We used to open this year actually uh, at the first retail, but I wanted first. Uh, my main priority was the quality, the roasting. Make sure I got, I, I have a connection with my customers, uh, and uh, and and that was um, that was the thing. So but but yes. Uh, so expansion of the roastery, I definitely uh, look for more uh, retail uh, uh, spaces and. Uh, Something new that we are doing actually is uh, we are going, we are listening to our customers and we are going to their uh, particular communities. We are just launching, I just designed a card, coffee card. So I have a coffee card right now. I don't, your customers doesn't, I mean, your guest doesn't see it right now, but this is one of our first coffee cards that uh, we designed right here. So it's all contained with everything. Uh, you know, we do right here put overs, very good espressos. Uh, so people experience this at their own communities. Uh, uh, that's what we are actually doing this year too. You know, very cool. Yeah, uh, we were talking about that and how you were you were connecting with various homeowners groups and associations to find out who would right. want you to come into their their neighborhoods. I want to make sure that I give you a chance to uh, or to tell tell us: Is there anything else that we didn't cover today that you would what What would you like people to know about um, your company? Well, uh, Origen Coffee is it's a little bit of out of the traditional. Uh, uh, if you look at my specialty coffee, most of the specialty coffee, and I really, you know, I support a lot of uh, our 
roasters that uh, uh, they are doing very well and they are uh, sourcing coffees, very good coffees. However, Origen coffee is mainly organic specialty coffee. And that's something that it is hard. Uh, I understand, you know, some people uh, uh, might say, you know what, I don't care as long as, uh, as, as the coffee tastes good. Uh, for me, uh, organic is, uh, is respect for the land. For me, organic is uh, respect for the workers. For me, organic is uh, respect for my customers too. And uh, so we, from, from uh, the very beginning, uh, most of our business is organic specialty, not just organic, because organic doesn't mean quality at all to me. Uh, it has to be specialty organic. Uh, so it, it takes a little bit longer to find really good lots, but I, I think is uh, we as a roaster need to to communicate and and encourage uh, this practice. Uh, everyone bet, gets better, especially right now with all these situations where you know we have climate change. We have, we have to respect our environment as much as we can, you know, uh, and, and, and that's uh, one of the views of origin, a specialty coffee, organic. And I hope uh, my customers uh, uh, realize that, you know, that it's organic specialty coffee. So the last question I have for you today, and this is something I ask everybody, is if you were to go to another coffee roaster, another coffee shop, uh, what kind of coffee do you order for yourself? You, I, I thought you just catch me right now. I was just drinking my, my, my cappuccino, right? So, so I, I enjoy most of the coffee, but I have three, I am inclined in uh, actually three beverages. Uh, first, uh, you know, it could be a very good espresso. You know, I, uh, I don't know if you have, have you been in a, a, a Mexican restaurant? I'm mm -hmm. from Mexico again. Uh, when I go to a, a Mexican restaurant, actually, if you are in Mexico and you go to a Mexican restaurant, you ask for the salsa, right? And then if the salsa is good, and that's actually what most people say, most, more than likely everything inside is going to be good. <laughs> espresso is what it is uh, for me. You know, if you go to a coffee shop, if I find a very good espresso, chances are that most of the coffees are, are actually really good too. You know, sometimes espresso tells you a lot, like the salsa though. Cappuccino is another one. And I, you know, it, it, it really tells you about the, the barista. It tells you about, you know, the skills you have as a barista, but also... Uh, cappuccinos are to me it's a perfect movie you know you have a, the coffee which is the protagonist and you have your antagonist which is the milk they have to be in harmony harmony so so to me i really enjoy a cappuccino because i feel you know the the the, the sweetness of that milk with the with, uh, with the with that coffee and and it really really made, made me wonder you know and made me kind of go beyond now the the, uh, the other one is uh, one of my my favorites actually i can say uh, any any drip coffee, you know, my favorite uh, put over, you know, I like to explore and really see uh, that uh, particular taste of that particular land, uh, of that particular farmer, of that particular uh, region, you know, that's what I wanted to see. So a very good Ethiopia, Jirgachev, uh, uh, or uh, versus a very good natural Ethiopia, you know, you feel it, you just, you, you, you uh, with, with a, a, a put over. You know, you know, I go to to Guatemala, seven regions of Guatemala. You can go to and get something kind of uh, uh, very sweet and and uh, and I can say good acidity, or you can get something more like uh, you know more creamy taste. You know, so uh, definitely a uh, uh, put over is probably what I'm more leaning towards when I'm looking for a, a, just a black coffee. I love that description of um, of the cappuccino being like a movie with the protagonist. Uh, that, yeah, that's really an interesting way to think about it. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially for the for the, you know for the I have a lot of customers who you know who are, are actually Italians and, and they came to our shop and and they actually agree on the same thing. You know, it has to be a balance. You know, there are different variations. You know, some people say, "Oh, I want a you know a, a cortado very close to a cappuccino." You know, make sure you have a, a, you know. The idea is that they want something balanced, you know, and that's how you uh, you understand, you know, the needs of a customer, you know, uh, and uh, the lattes is more for the American uh, and, and also respectful too, but it's more milk, it's unbalanced, you know, more milk than coffee though. And then the flavorings is another thing, so not, not much fun of a flavor and everything, you know, additional flavorings because our coffees are really flavorful by itself, so you don't actually need to do anything, but we, yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I agree. The coffee that I had was uh, really enjoyable. I actually drank it as a French press, as a pour over, and uh, just really was able to taste different things depending on how I brewed it. So I really appreciated that you were sharing that with me. 
Ruben, I really appreciate you joining the show today and just congratulations on, on the last year and the success you've had. And I'm excited to see what you've got coming out in the future. It is my honor, my pleasure. And, uh, and I want to thank you. Uh, thank you and your audience also for this. Okay, to recap, Origin Coffee Roasters sells specialty organic coffee online at local farmers markets and cafes, and they opened their first retail space in Carlsbad, California this year. They're looking forward towards the expansion of their roastery and into more retail spaces. Ruben briefly mentioned it, but one way they are expanding is by partnering with community homeowners associations to set up coffee carts designed to create cafe-like experiences right in the neighborhood. They already have one pilot cart running in a private community in Rancho Santa Fe. It's a pretty unique business model that I haven't heard before. Ruben and I chatted a few weeks ago, but this week I checked in on him to see what they were serving right now. And he said they were serving some new single origin coffees from Honduras, Guatemala, and Colombia. I'll link to their online shop in the show notes. I mentioned in the opener that I had a cold brew that I picked up on a recent road trip. I was driving from the Midwest back to California, and while it was a very direct trip, without a lot of relaxing vacation time, I did make a point to hit up as many coffee roasteries as I could along the way. My very first stop was at Ruby Colorful Coffee Roasters in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. They also have a roasting facility in nearby Nelsonville. Walking into the cafe right near the downtown, the river, and the University of Wisconsin campus, I felt right at home, in part because Wisconsin is my own origin source but also because it just had a very relaxed vibe. And the Ruby Baristas, Abby and Aaron, and the general manager, Kellen, were incredibly welcoming. Kellen even took a moment to tell me how he got into coffee. Just a note before I play this, we were standing in a working cafe, and we were both wearing masks, which is why the audio is a little muffled. What got you into coffee, and why do you like it or love it? Okay, so my name is Kellen Kirky. K-E-L-L-E-N-F-E-R-K-E-Y. Uh, we're from Ruby Coffee Roasters. I run the Ruby Cafe in Stevens Point, the GM. Um, coffee started for me when I was 16 years old, and I was downtown Madison. I don't even know the name of the small coffee shop. And I had my first shot of espresso, and from then on, things changed. But um, the atmosphere of a coffee shop when I was a teenager was honestly what drew me to coffee. And I have a food background. And having something, a cafe that is local focused and community focused was something that was on my mind for a long time. But coffee and food always go together and this is where it all landed. Check out at Ruby Roasters on Instagram and I'll link to the Ruby website and share some photos from the trip on RoastWestCoast.com. Plus, I'm looking forward to sharing some more travel clips with you in upcoming episodes from far off places like Fruta, Colorado which is one of my favorite stopping points on the drive between the Midwest and the coast, and the Aspen Street Coffee Company is one of the reasons why. If you have been enjoying listening to the stories of entrepreneurship, of coffee professionals, of coffee itself, please share the Roast West Coast Coffee Podcast with a friend. And if you've got time to give us a review on Apple or wherever you listen, I promise it will be appreciated. Organic word of mouth is the best way for this show to grow, And honestly, I can't thank you enough for listening and making a point to appreciate your morning cups of coffee just a little bit more. If this episode inspired you to drink some coffee, please stop by one of this show's roast industry partners like Cafe La Terre, Camp Coffee Company, or Coffee Cycle Roasting. You could also order a bag or two for at home from Steady State Roasting, Moster Coffee Company, or Zumbar Coffee and Tea. And if you need a little monthly pick-me-up, think about setting up a subscription so you never run out from Marea Coffee or Leap Coffee. I'll link to all of those great roast industry partners online. And as always, thanks to Cape Horn Coffee Importers and First Light Whiskey for supporting this show and helping me grow the craft coffee community. I also want to thank Ruben for spending some time with me on the Roast West Coast Coffee Podcast. This episode is, was, has been written, produced, and recorded by me, Ryan Wolt. I hope this show has found you happy, healthy, and with at least enough sanity to make it through the day. And please, always tip your baristas, and be sure to drink good coffee.